Welcome to the Magnify Your Miracles podcast. Get ready to be inspired, uplifted, and connected to the miraculous energy of unconditional love that I call Mother Mary. If you're a highly sensitive, highly creative entrepreneur or light worker, and you want to magnify your impact and your intuition, you are in the right place. I'm your host, Reverend Francis Faden, interfaith minister, intuitive coach, and author of Meditation is Friendship with God. I can't wait to share miraculous stories, books, meditations, messages, and interviews with other miraculous light workers just like you. Are you ready to magnify your miracles? What are we waiting for? Let's get started. Hello, my friend, and welcome to another episode of the Magnify Your Miracles podcast. This is Reverend Francis Faden, and I'm so grateful that we get to spend this time together. We're going to be talking about a topic that is near and dear to my heart. But before we jump into that, let's take a few deep breaths together, just get ourselves grounded and centered and really open and receptive to this inspiration today. So bring your awareness to your breathing. Even if you are driving a car, please keep your eyes open, but you can still bring your awareness to your breath. Breathing in the energy of expansion, breathing out anything that you no longer need. And for the next few minutes, just give yourself 100% permission to let go of whatever happened before, whatever might be happening afterwards, and just really be here in the now. And whatever it is that you would most love to hear today, whatever kind of inspiration it would be medicine for you today, let's just let you imagine that you've already received it, you've already heard it, you've been inspired, you've got a a shot of inspiration in your arm, and you are just feeling the effects of that. Just feel happy, grateful, excited, whatever it might be for you. And as you let yourself feel that feeling, knowing that that is exactly what's going to be happening, let's take one more deep breath together in gratitude. And we can begin. All right, my friend. Well, today we're going to be talking about a really important topic And it is how to recognize the divine. How how can you actually know when you've made contact with the divine? And there are actually eight ways that I've learned over my time on this planet. And this is a teaching that comes from Paramahansa Yogananda. So for some of you, you know that I'm a devotee of Paramahansa Yogananda. I've been a devotee of his, his since 2002, 2003, somewhere around in there actually lived in an ashram that was based on his teachings. And this is one of the teachings that I learned that was really so helpful. Because have you ever had a time where you sit down to meditate or you don't even try to meditate because you tell yourself, oh, whenever I meditate, nothing happens. Have you ever had that? People say, I tried meditating, but nothing happens. Well, what I'm going to tell you is it's not possible that nothing is happening What's likely happening is that you don't recognize what it is that hap- that's happening. And, you know, I love books and I love promoting books and telling you about all these great books. And I've yet to talk about my books that are on Amazon. And I'm not going to be talking about it too much today, but I, I do have a really cool book called How to Recognize God, uh, Eight Ways to Experience the Divine. And it's like 99 cents or something like that. So I'll put the link in the show notes, but go to Amazon and treat yourself for 99 cents because in that book, it's not a very long book. It's actually got some excerpts from my other book, which is called Meditation is Friendship with God. But this little book for 99 cents, as soon as you get it, you'll be able to click and download an MP3 that's a guided meditation that takes you through these eight experiences. So I'll put all that in the show notes so you know where to look. And people have asked me, where are the show notes? If you go to my website, francisfaden.com, and you go to the podcast tab on the top, it'll take you to the page where all the episodes are listed. And you just look for your episode, you click on it, and then that's where all the show notes are. So just in case you're confused as to where to find these show notes, that's where they are. So anyway, back to these experiences. Paramahansa Yogananda said that there are eight primary ways that we can 
experience the divine. He called them the eight aspects of God. I call them the eight experiences of God because when you're having these experiences, you know that you are in communion with the divine. And I'm going to tell you what they are. It's peace, calmness, love, joy, wisdom, power, light, and sound. I'll say it again. Peace, calmness, love, joy, power, wisdom, light, and sound. Those are the eight experiences of God. And that's what I talk about in my little book, um, How to Recognize God. Because if you're meditating or you're sitting to pray or you're doing whatever spiritual practices you're doing, and you're expecting to experience something besides those eight things, you're going to be disappointed. And if you're fixated on only in one of those things, like I want to see light, I want to see light, I want to see light, or I want to hear voices or whatever it might be, or I want Archangel Gabriel to manifest to me like he did to Mother Mary. If you put an expectation on yourself and then you don't have that experience, you're going to tell yourself nothing happened. I'm not really experiencing anything. I can't meditate. This isn't for me. And I used to believe that. And that's why I'm so grateful for this teaching, because what Yogananda said is the very first aspect or the very first way or the easiest way for us to experience the divine is the energy of peace. Now, I know for a fact that if you sit and you close your eyes and you just focus on your breath, if that's all you do, you don't use a mantra, you don't visualize anything, all you do is sit in a comfortable position, you close your eyes and you focus on your breath and you do that for two minutes, three minutes, your body is going to respond to that. It's going to calm down. Your mind is going to start to calm down, not completely, but it will start to, why? Because we've closed our eyes. We've closed off one of our five senses. And so we're not getting all this sensory input all the time that distracts us We're focusing our energy within. And then when we focus on our breath, what happens is even if you're not trying, your breath will slow down. It'll become more even. You'll notice that you'll start to, instead of like breathing in a shallow way, you'll start to breathe more deeply, just naturally doing that. And those things will have the energy of peace wash over you. Just doing that. And maybe we'll do that in a little bit, but I just want to give you the mechanics of it. Once you experience that energy of peace, you've now entered the kingdom. You might be at the front door, you might be at the gate, but you're inside, you're inside. You might not be all the way to, you know, seeing the third eye and self-realization and all that great stuff. But Yogananda said, if you could be a hundred percent in the energy of peace, you would be self-realized. So it's not like, oh, peace, that's like, you know, that's like the cheap seats. (laughs) What I'm really looking for is light and sound. No, my friend, when you're in that energy of peace, if you went all the way in the energy of peace, you would be transformed and everybody around you would be transformed. And I'm going to share with you One time when I was living in Baltimore, which is a long time ago, I think this was in the 90s, I went with somebody to go see the great Buddhist master Thich Nhat Hanh, and peace is his life's work. He was in the Vietnam War, and he was really distraught about everything he saw, and he was like, how can I change this? And he's like, I need to become peace. And so he's got several books called, like, Pieces Every Step and Walking Peace and all these different things. And so he's a really great resource as well. But I can tell you that I had never been to see him before. I'd read his books and I really wanted to go see him. When we walked in that auditorium, it was, I think it was Constitution Hall, I think, um, which holds about 5,000 people. I know that because a couple of years before then I had seen the Go-Go's. <laughs> and so very different energy in Constitution Hall. And he was on the stage, just him um, on, a, on a small platform so that the people that were sitting in the front rows would be able to see him. And he was sitting in lotus posture and he was just meditating. He just was in that inward peaceful place. 
you could have heard a pin drop. 5,000 people. And the peace emanating from him was palpable. I'd never experienced anything like that, not before then and not since then, where it, I was in the most profound state of peace. And to be honest, it was so profound that it was difficult for me to maintain back then. And I ended up feeling like I was nodding off. Um, and that's okay because that energy of peace is a rejuvenating energy. It's a very healing vibration. And yet we kind of discard it like it's no big deal, but it's a huge deal because peace is also the antithesis of stress. You know, so I was just watching a documentary on how people heal and they said most illnesses are stress related or at least stress exacerbated, meaning that stress makes whatever you have going on worse. Well, what would the opposite of that be? It would be the energy of peace. So peace is one of the easiest things. It's one of the fastest ways you can come into the presence of the divine. And then once you're there, if you're able to maintain peace, then you have calmness. And who doesn't like to be around people who are really calm, right? Sustained peace is calmness. It's the next level. And then we have the energy of love. When you start to feel that beautiful heart opening energy, which, you know, when we work with Mother Mary's energy, that's what we feel a lot of the time. But you can work with any of these great masters and they help to open your heart to the vibration of love. And sometimes that can be overwhelming. It can be hard to, to take in that energy of unconditional love. I know for me, sometimes when I go to sacred places where Mother Mary has been, I just cry. I'm just crying. Happy tears, but crying. I'm just crying. And then we have the energy of joy. That is another of the energies, a ways that you can experience the divine. I detail all of these in that in my little book. So that's why I think it'd be easier for you to go and, and check it out and go in a little bit more detail if you want to. But the energy of joy, when you start to touch that energy of joy, it's like touching the hem of the garment of God. Joy is the energy of the divine. Love is the energy of the divine. These are qualities. When you're in that energy, you're just so blissful. Your vibration is really, really high. And then we have the next two, which are power and wisdom. And sometimes these can be a little tricky for people. But the way that I like to explain that, it's, it's the energy of wisdom, the wisdom to know everything that is. Everything that can be known can be known right now. We have to expand our awareness to be able to do it. So right now you're listening to this podcast, the technology to create this podcast and to have it be available has always been present. But 200 years ago, we, we didn't have the awareness. We didn't know how electricity worked. We didn't know how uh, electromagnetic frequency, like we didn't know anything. Even as much as 30 years ago, having this kind of a computer and this kind of equipment, we didn't know. But now we do. Why? Because our, our awareness has expanded to be able to receive the wisdom that's already there. So everything that can be known is already in existence. We have to expand our awareness and you can meditate on the aspect of the divine known as wisdom. And that's when you get those downloads. Like so you didn't know something and suddenly you know it. Well, what happened is you tapped into that energy of wisdom or maybe you need to make a decision and you're thinking about something. And what happens? You tap into the wisdom of the divine and you get that guidance. But it's very hard to tap into that wisdom if you're agitated. So that's why we always go back to the energy of peace and calmness. If you can be peaceful and calm, all the other aspects of the divine start to manifest. Now, everybody's wired differently. So you might be some someone for whom being in that energy of love and devotion, boom, that can be the thing that puts you into that peace and calmness and really you know, brings things forward for you. Everybody's different. So I'm not trying to, you know, tell you one way is better than the other. But it's a lot easier for me to access that wisdom when I'm calm. That's why I always say a prayer before I'm doing whatever I'm doing. Whenever I work with a client, whenever I'm leading any of my channeling sessions, my group message circles, I always say a very specific prayer. Why? Because it calms me down. It opens my heart. And it opens my mind to that wisdom of the divine. And it works every time. 
So we have that energy of wisdom. That's another way. And then we have the energy of power. Now, power is a little bit tricky because a lot of people are afraid of that energy of power. Why? Because energy, that energy has been misused a lot. And women, I find, really have a challenge with this energy, especially at the third chakra. They don't want to have anything to do with power. They don't own their power. They often push it away because they don't want to be like whoever it might be that misused power. But that power is within you. Right now, the power of God is digesting your food. It's repairing your, if you get a scratch, it's repairing your skin. It's regenerating your cells. It's the neurons going back and forth in your brain, helping you to even process this message. It's growing your hair and, you know, whatever, whatever else you can think of, all those processes in your body are there because of the power of God. The power of God is what keeps the earth spinning and not crashing into the moon and keeps everything working in order. That same power, sometimes I'll say to my clients, look up in the sky and look at the cosmos, look how incredible it is, or go to the, uh, the Hubble telescope site or the NASA site and look at these nebula and things that are out there. Whatever you can see out there is within you, not only physically, but energetically as well, as above, so below, as within, so without. So whatever you can witness out there in the cosmos, think of the incredible power that it took to manifest the universe. That energy is within you. You have the power within you to really magnify your miracles. You have the power within you to manifest whatever it might be. And I don't just mean manifesting things. I mean being that quality. We talked last week about that um, prayer demand by Paramahansa Yogananda, and he was really into people using their power. He was not an advocate of Oh, let somebody do it for me. Let, you know, let Jesus save me or let Mother Mary come and do it for me. Or if you believe that, that's fine. But he would rather take it into his own hands and use his willpower in combination with invoking the divine. So I'm not telling you don't invoke the divine. I do it every day. But we can't be doing it from a place of passivity. We want to be doing it in a dynamic way. That's when you use your God-given power. You have the power within you right now to solve any and all problems that are in your life. And when you invoke the help of heaven, now you're opening yourself up to wisdom. And when you can start to feel love and gratitude, gratitude really opens the door for all of these experiences of the divine, and you can stay peaceful and calm. Now you know this is how you magnify your miracles. This is, this is part of the path. So it's really, really important. Then we get to the energy of sound and light. And it's actually light and then sound. Because if you read in the Bible, it says, God said, let there be light. So sound came before the energy of light. And you might experience God as light. You might close your eyes and there's a flash of light. Sometimes people experience apparitions and all kinds of things. For me personally, I usually experience it in my mind's eye. But the thing we want to see most of all is the energy of the third eye, which if you can, great. And if you can't, that's okay too. There are powerful, great saints who never developed that faculty and yet became completely self-realized. So don't put too much emphasis on, I want to see something. As soon as you let go of wanting it, it'll probably happen for you. And then the final one being sound. What is the sound that we're talking about? It Could it be a voice? Sure it could. It could be the voice of your guardian angel, it could be the voice of Mother Mary, it could be the voice of whoever you're connected with. But even more than that, there's a subtle sound. It's the sound of Om. Now, maybe you've gone to yoga classes and you're like, why does everybody chant Om at the beginning and the end of my yoga classes? Like, I don't get it. You know, it it's, looks like it's pronounced O-M. It's actually pronounced A-U-M. It's Om is actually how it's pronounced. And that sound is actually the sound of the cosmos. It's the sound of creation. And there are certain techniques that you can learn where you start to shut off some of your outer senses, like you close your eyes and you close your ears. And by doing that, you go beyond your body sounds and you start to hear that energy of the universe. It kind of sounds a little bit like the sound of the ocean in some some ways. It's kind of like a rumbling. And the cool thing is, is if you look through scripture in different traditions, 
you will see that people refer to this rumbling of thunder before the divine shows up, or there was this huge rush of wind. And then some, like a lot of Mother Mary's apparitions, you'll see that they'll say, oh, St. Bernadette was out gathering wood and there was this sound of a big wind and then Mother Mary was there. That's the sound of manifestation. It's that, that sound. We hear this, and I, I'm sorry, I don't remember it specifically in the Bible. I'm pretty sure it's in Ezekiel where they talk about this rumbling sound and then there's this manifestation. So that energy is very possible. Now you might sit to meditate and that might be the first thing that happens for you is you have that experience. What I'm saying is start where you are, take the pressure off yourself and just let yourself want to commune with the divine. By sitting to meditate, you're just allowing yourself to be in that energy. And any of these eight experiences of the divine are a blessing. And when you have them, when you start to feel peaceful or calm, I want you to smile. Even if you're meditating, I want you to smile because you made it in the gate. You're now in on holy ground. You've now made it into that beautiful inner sanctum. I want you to smile. It's like, oh, peaceful. I'm feeling peaceful. I'm in. It's a really beautiful thing. So I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. Again, if you're driving, do not close your eyes. But if you're listening any other way, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. Now, sometimes people want to put their hand on their chest. You can do that. You, I like to rub my hands together. That seems to open up my channels. You can sit, just sit up straight so that you're not laying down. If you lay down and you try to meditate, your subconscious mind is going to think you're going to sleep and you'll usually fall asleep. So try to sit up if you can. I like to have my palms facing up. And all we're going to do is we are going to focus on our breath. We're going to focus on breathing in and breathing out. And keep your eyes closed. If you want to get some extra points um, when your eyes are closed, if you want to have your eyes actually as if you're looking up in the distance to a mountaintop in the distance, so your eyes are slightly elevated, but your lids are actually closed. You can get extra points for doing that. And then just focus on your breathing. If you can breathe through your nose only, that's even better. But become very aware of the energy coming through the nostrils and coming out of the nostrils. And just allowing yourself to do this for a few moments, notice how you feel. And as you allow yourself to dip your toe into the pool of peace, know that this is all it takes. There's a lot more things that you can do. You can bring in a mantra. There's many, many things that you can do. But I really encourage you to just start here. With just focus on your breath. Just let your body be relaxed and just start to be aware of the energy of peace. What you'll notice is that it's already here. It's been within you the whole time. And by letting yourself slow down a little bit, that peace naturally emerges. All right, my friend. So let's take one more deep breath with me, please. And we end our little mini meditation time. So what was that like for you? How was it to just sit and be with yourself? Were you able to feel the energy of peace? I'm curious. You might need to do it a little bit longer if you've had a hectic day, if you're not used to it. Don't worry about if you're having thoughts and all that. We're not talking about the mind, at least not at this point. We just want to feel that energy of peace. Feel that energy. That is what will help you 
really start to sustain it through calmness and then open you up to love and joy and power and wisdom and light and sound. And just like peace, those qualities, those aspects of the divine are already within you. You're born with them. So again, all we have to do is move out everything that's not that, and then we get to experience that what I like to call the divine presence. It's already within you. When God, when Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you, that's what he meant. You know, it's so funny to me that Jesus said over and over, the kingdom of God is within you, and yet everybody's thinking about after they die, they go to heaven. It's like, well, he said the kingdom is within you right here, right now. It's here. We don't have to wait for that kingdom. It's right within you. And these are the eight ways that you know that you've arrived. So if you're ever driving around a new neighborhood and you're like, how do I know if I'm in the neighborhood? Now you know. There's these eight aspects. There's these eight signs that let you know you have arrived. You've crossed the border. You're in the Holy Land, the inner Holy Land. You're now on sacred ground. I would really love to hear about your experience. If you notice that when you meditate that you have any of these eight experiences, I'd love to hear more about your experience as well. And maybe we'll dive in a little bit more in some future episodes into um, the energy of meditation and how you know that you're connecting with the divine. So as I said, I will put some things in the show notes for you. So if you want to go check out my book, How to Recognize God, 99 cents on Amazon. Give yourself a treat and check it out, mostly because I really want you to listen to that guided meditation on how to experience the eight aspects of God. I take you through each one, um, and it's a really beautiful uh, meditation. All right, my friend, thank you so much. Remember, the key to magnifying your miracles is to really know that your miracle is already here. That's what we said. The wisdom All the wisdom that ever was and ever will be is here now. It's here now. And your miracle is here now as well. God bless you, my friend. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Magnify Your Miracles podcast. I'm so grateful to be able to spend this time with you. If you want even more inspiration, feel free to visit my website, francisfaden.com or magnifyyourmiracles.com. And if you did enjoy this episode, I would really appreciate it if you left a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever it is that you connect with awesome podcasts. Remember, the key to magnifying your miracles is remembering that your miracle is already here.